guys, it's Cauliflower and I'm here today with a video on how to use the Sample Swap Shop page on Facebook that I have created probably about six or seven months ago now. I know that um, many of you have come to the page and have left me inbox questions on, well, how do you go about it? I'm really interested in swapping and I have no idea how to use the page. Can somebody um, explain it to me? So I know that I don't always get to a lot of you. I know sometimes I'll send like a genuine, a genuine, a general, not a genuine, not a general. <laughs> a general description of what to, to do when you get to the page, but I think sometimes people feel like they really don't have a grasp on it. So I wanted to make this video. I wanted to compile questions and answers and also a do's and don'ts on how to use Sample Swap Shop. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a lot more information that you can use and therefore now bring yourself to the page so you can, too, involve yourself in swaps because it's a lot of fun and we all enjoy doing it. But of course, like anything else, we do have our rules. So the first question, of course, that I always get is, how do you use the sample swap shop? Well, first of all, of course, you have to come to Sample Swap Shop on Facebook and, of course, like the page. That gets you in, of course. You don't need any membership. We don't have to accept you. It's not a private group. It's just a, a like or dislike page. But in order to swap, you have to like the page first. And then simply, um, what I tell people generally to do is, first of all, Sample Swap Shop is about swapping out samples that either you get in, in subscription boxes, either you collect from mail freebies or giveaways that you've received or things that you've gotten over you know, a period of time, a course of time, things that you've gotten couponing that you are accumulating and you yourself may not be using them or you may not have, you know, maybe you've given some to family, some to friends, but you still have a lot left over and there are things you would rather have instead of those things. Those are the items we are asking you to, to put together in a, in a picture and post on our site. So of course the first rule is collect samples, products and arrange them clearly and in proper lighting. Many times, I know we all do this in a rush and I have done it myself, many times when we are so excited to do a swap, we want to get that picture out there so quickly that we will take our phones and we will snap this picture and we'll upload it to the page so quickly that by the time it gets to the page, you can barely make out what the items are and you have people asking you, well, what is this this particular bottle or this particular blue package or what's that yellow thing in the corner? So, what I suggest that you do is that make sure that you have everything clearly in a spot where you can take a picture of them and have them arranged in a way where we can see upwardly what they look like and get an idea of what they actually are. You don't have to have them perfect, you don't have to make, you know, you don't have to have like the proper lighting, just so that we're able to make out what they look like. After you do that, um, make sure that before you post the picture that below that you now list everything you have out there and a description of what it is, who it's by, and most importantly, if it has been used or swatched. Many times people will post things and they don't include that either they, they use them and didn't like them or that they swatched them. And when another person receives that, particular item, they don't understand why there's a finger mark, why there's um, a bottle that's loose, or why some products sometimes actually will combust or open in shipment because it was used and not properly packaged. I will get to packaging later. So, the rules about what kind of items you must post. Mainly samples, mainly things from, from subscription services, if you're part of Birchbox, Ipsy, Beauty Box 5, um, uh, Vox Box from Linfluencer, whatever it is you get items from is perfectly fine as long as they're not expired, as long as they're not severely used, and as long as they're closed, new or in like new condition before you send them out. If you have bought a product that you do not like, 
Say you tried a facial cream once and you know you've tried this product and you can't use it but you think you want to put it up for swap. Make sure that you include that you have mildly used that product. But do not post a picture of something that you have used more than twice because at that point it's not sanitary, there's all sorts of bacterial issues, and it's just not something people want to get. They don't want to get used products, but we do say and we do accept mildly or barely used. If you've swatched it, it's okay. If you've, you know, checked a perfume out or if you've checked a lipstick and, you know, on your hand like we all do, same thing goes for creams, things like that. But be aware that it's mainly, you get what you give. So if you're expecting something that you want that's not open, that's not, you know, used, then have the same consideration for the person that you're posting to. Okay, after you have snapped your picture and put a brief description of what you are posting, please, 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 and I know a lot of us don't do this, and especially the ones that now are comfortable with each other, but... When you are brand new and you have never done this before, please make sure you tell that person or persons that you are going to swap with what you are looking for. And please don't use the term loosely, whatever you have, because basically they will send you whatever they have. And at that point, we are not responsible for whatever is sent to you. So make sure if you are looking for items such as mascaras, lipsticks, creams, skincare, make sure that that is what you list and say if you have an allergy, say if you can't use certain products, if you dislike certain products, these are all helpful tips in letting us know or getting to know what kind of items we can put up for swap for you, in particular the next time we do it. So please be very descriptive with what you are looking for. Um, okay, now, after your picture is posted, your description is up there, you basically put out to the world, hey, this is what I'm looking for, make sure, okay, there's always going to be chaos when somebody posts a picture because everybody gets excited and that's me included. After someone comments, make sure if they are interested that they have items available to swap and have posted either a picture up on the timeline or that they're going to send you a private picture via fa uh, Facebook in your inbox. Many times what happens is somebody will post a picture and I've done it a million times. I will post a picture, somebody will post a picture and somebody will say, oh I'm interested in that specific concealer and you'll say, okay great, what do you have to swap and they'll go, oh I don't know right now, I have to check my stuff and I'll get back to you. Now I'm not saying write them off completely, but be aware that if they say, okay, I'm going to go post a picture, I'm going to go see what I have, make sure that they get back to you in a proper frame of time. So if you posted something at 6 o'clock and by 6.30 or 7 o'clock somebody hasn't gotten back to you, move on. Let somebody else claim that item. Many, many times there are items that are left over in swaps that could have been claimed if somebody else who did have a picture available, who did have items available, and who also is ready to swap with you, they will lose out on that because a new person per se, maybe they don't know how to use the page yet, or somebody who just happens upon your picture and goes, oh, I want that, make sure that they have something readily available, they're ready to swap, that they're telling you about, that they give you a picture about, or they have posted to the timeline. Okay, next thing is your shipping arrangements. All shipping arrangements are yours and that party's responsibility. We are not responsible for anything that happens right after you make your promise to ship. So, that includes if you tell such party that you are shipping on a specific day or date, make sure that is the day you are shipping. Many times, and I've gotten this in my inbox many, many times, I will get told that somebody promised they were shipping on a Thursday. And the following Thursday, that same person who said that they were shipping all of a sudden posts a timeline message, I'm sorry about, I couldn't ship Thursday, I'm going to be shipping on Tuesday. And that's all fine and good as long as you're contacting somebody 
before you post that on the timeline. Many times people will come to me and message me personally on my personal page and tell me they haven't heard from the person that they're swapping with and they also didn't receive a swap from them. There's going to be a few things I'm going to tell you to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Here's how we start with this. First of all, when you make your shipping arrangements after all your items are agreed upon, send that person your contact information immediately, including if you have a P.O. box. Do not just send a P.O. box and Jay Johnson and that's it. That will not get you your package. Jay Johnson can be anybody and P.O. boxes can be very sketchy. Secondly, your packaging. And this is now a new, this is going to be a new segment now, moving on from that. But we'll get to packing in a minute. Once you go to the post office, you have packaged everything, you make your shipment arrangements, you ship it, either UPS, ground, FedEx, whatever you do. Contact that person that you have swapped with and let them know that you have shipped. And if you can, because this is such such a wonderful thing in your favor and that person's favor, please give them a tracking number. So many times that people start the swaps and they ship and they tell another person that they have shipped, they do not provide a tracking number. And many times things have gotten lost or rerouted back because of either address is not correct, not enough postage, or basically they don't know who they're shipping to. So you must, must be very, very careful and sure that you get all the proper information and as well as if you have a tracking number, I implore you to send it to that person so they know A, you have proof of sending what you sent and B, if there happens to be a problem that arises, they can call the post office and get some information about what happened to that specific package. Okay, now we're going to move on to packing do's and packing don'ts. Myself included many times, especially when you're first doing these things. Heed in mind what you are sending to a person and heed in mind where they live. Those are two very important factors in shipping. Number one, do package all of your items well. And I don't mean by taking them and throwing them in a Ziploc bag, throwing them in a package and sending them out. No. First of all, Wrap as much as you can in some kind of protective paper or bubble wrap or if you're going to use Ziploc bags, make sure that there's tissue paper or paper towel or something in there binding it together. So in case something does leak or in case something does open per chance, they will have something to go on instead of all over your box and destroying the rest of your products. If you are sending nail polish, cleansers, shampoos, conditioners, anything with any liquid base, make sure, especially if it's a full-size product, that you secure the top of it. So therefore, you are now, um, you're making it more, less impossible, you're making it less of an issue for it to combust or it to open from the top. You can use masking tape, which is a great thing. Somebody sent me a bunch of stuff in masking tape. I thought that was great because it's easy to take off and your item is well protected and you, nothing is dripping out. So make sure that everything is securely with tops, with whatever. Um, I know that certain hairsprays and, and um, stylers have those weird things that have the little lock at the bottom and sometimes those pieces break off. Take a couple of pieces of masking tape and just secure it around the top to make sure all that stays in place. And then tissue it or put it in a bubble wrap to secure it. So making sure that anything liquid does not leak out. Do not. <laughs> and again, do not overload your packages to save you on shipping. And I am one of those people that have done it too. Many times I have received, and I think it's great, and I do implore you to recycle as much as you can. I, a lot of people use their Ipsy bags. A lot of people use their birch box boxes. A lot of people use boxes that they had received from other, you know, things that they've gotten sent in the mail. And that's fine. That's wonderful. If you're going to use such things and recycle them, again, make sure there's no rips, tears, holes, you know, 
make sure everything is secure. And if you're going to put it in one of those little bubble envelopes, understand that there's only a certain amount that can fit in those bubble envelopes without it combusting or without it being an issue at the post office when you're going to ship. Okay. Do make sure you have enough filling to keep your items safe, i.e. newspaper, again, bubble wrap, any kind of like mailing wrap or anything like that, just to make sure that everything is secure and everything arrives the way it was sent to you. Okay. Also, a very important thing, I don't think we all realize this, when we're sending to either different states, different countries, overseas, however, whoever you're sending it to, be aware of their climate. If you live in Alaska and you are shipping to Miami, be aware that some of the items you're sending could possibly melt in the sunlight or in the extreme conditions of wherever a person may live. If you live in Arizona, you've got 100 degrees you're dealing with. If you live in the north of, you know, the Arctic Ocean, it's going to be cold. So be aware of their Humid, their climates. If it's humid, if it's cold, make sure if you're sending something that can melt, make sure it's protected, make sure it's in something that keeps it from getting melted. The same thing goes for things that can freeze over. Make sure that they're thermalized, that they're protected, that they can't freeze over. I can't tell you how many times it has happened. So make sure to keep aware of the climate that you're sending to. Do make sure your address labels are legible and the return address is legible. Do not write them in lipsticks, in crayons, in anything that can be wiped off that package because you're screwed. <laughs> the post office will not have an idea of who you're shipping to. You will get that package back. You will now make a very upset person waiting for your swap um, very upset. and. It's just not a good thing. It takes about 2.2 seconds to take a sticker out, or if, you're, if you are recycling something, make sure that you take a nice big piece of paper or a big sticker, whatever, over your past shipping information and write legibly and clearly the address you are shipping it to, or else you will get that package right back. Okay. Also, Make sure you let the person or persons, if you have more than one swap, know what day you'll be shipping out and possibly how it's being sent. Again, I repeat, if you say you're sending on a Monday, make sure you're sending on a Monday. If something happens and we all have a life, we all get busy, we all get tied up with school, work, kids, I get it, I have a life too, those things happen to me too, things happen. Of course they do. We make exceptions. Everybody just, you know, can't be perfect all the time. So make sure if you say, oh, you know, I said I was going to, I was going to ship Monday, but it's going to be Tuesday. That's fine. Really good. Just make sure that you contact the person that you're swapping with, that they know this. And 99% per of the time, they're fine with it because listen, like I said, we're all human. Don't say you are shipping on a day you do not plan on shipping just to get somebody off your back. And I will get to that portion of the rules in a little bit later. But make sure if you are not planning on shipping or you're not able to ship, okay, do not tell a person you're shipping anyway because that person now will be expecting it. And it's not fair to that person to be put off because you couldn't ship or you couldn't even give them, you know, two cents of a consideration to let them know that, you know, you're not ready to ship yet. Do not give them false um, promises. Do not do that. Please be courteous and let everybody know what the circumstance is if you have a problem and if it arises. Okay, the tracking number I spoke about, make sure it's available. If you can provide it, please provide it to the person too you, you're swapping with. In case it does not get to them, they have a way to check. <laughs> Here's another one that I'm sure you guys are going to shake your head at me and go, what do you mean by that? But I guarantee you this happens. Don't forget the person you swap, you're swapping with. And I mean this like it, it does happen. If you forget who you're swapping with, how do you know who you're going to send your stuff to? So the persons or persons 
and I might and remind people sometimes try not to have more than three swaps at a time because this is going to happen to you all the time first of all you're going to get very you're going to get overloaded with products that you don't remember who's going to what and secondly you have to remember who you're swapping to now us veterans and the ones that know certain people listen we can do that because we know we've gotten to know people when you're more comfortable with this with the um, the procedures and the way things go you can definitely do that if you can handle it if you are new to the page don't have three four five swaps going at a time you'll never be able to keep up you'll never remember who you're sending to so a very important factor is don't forget who you have a swap with write their name down if you don't remember if it's someone you just met or never swap with make sure you have a way to contact them either via Facebook Instagram Twitter email whatever whatever way you feel comfortable text messaging make sure you have a way to contact them so you do remember who you are swapping with and work and how the sample swap shop actual procedure works here's some rules about how to get <laughs> how to get a good experience on the swap shop what to do and what not to do so here it is people rules and I've got a lot of them okay numero uno rule do not claim items that you want you want well actually what I wrote is if you claim items make sure you can swap when the items are posted at that point at that time meaning no one is gonna hold a item for you for longer than that day I don't think it's fair for anyone to post a picture and somebody to claim and say oh I want that but I don't have anything right now could you hold on to that for me it's really not fair to make a person who is trying to now get rid of the stuff that they are posting to say that you want it but you have nothing to offer it's an equal opportunity here it's an equal opportunity to get the thing you want and also to swap out something else for that thing in particular if you don't have an item there's no reason for you to get involved in the swap so it's not very courteous to ask somebody hey can you hold that for me because nobody's gonna hold anything for a month for you um, it's unrealistic it's not fair and you know it's not fair to the people that can swap now number two do not involve yourself in a swap you know you cannot deliver on and that goes from the from the rule number one if you know you can't ship that week don't get involved don't even put yourself out there going oh ooh, I really really want that lipstick I really will really, really really want those items and uh, you know and I've got stuff up for swap but I can't ship if you have a specific time that is more comfortable for you hey I can ship Wednesday I can ship Friday then go ahead and do it if you know you can't ship at all until next month's check or when my husband gets paid in two and a half weeks or you know when this happens don't even get involved because again you're holding up anybody else who can potentially ship that week from having a successful swap and that includes yourself as well you don't want to be held up by anybody who's saying well I can't ship today but I can ship in three weeks again it's not really being fair or courteous to the other people who are interested in what you have to offer okay um, do not make a promise to ship and don't deliver oh I cannot tell you how this is the biggest no-no on my page first of all it is the biggest problem on the page when you tell somebody that you're shipping hey so-and-so I shipped today they're gonna be expecting within two to three business days maybe more depending on where you live to be receiving a package in the mail and they will go to their mailbox their PO boxes their post offices to check on that so make sure if you say I'm shipping today it should be within blah 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 again this is why the tracking number is so important because if you don't have the proof that you shipped it we don't know you shipped it we're only going by word of mouth and unfortunately that doesn't get you very far these days so make sure you have some sort of proof if you say you shipped it make sure you actually shipped it <sighs> number four do not make verbal ie text message promises what I mean by this is 
I can send you a lipstick or I think I have that. I think I have a couple of those. Let me go check and then you don't get back to that person or this person is kind of left hanging. Don't do it. First of all, if you can't make anything, if you can't provide <laughs> something that we can see or hear, then if we can't see it, if we cannot hear it, don't plan on getting it. Don't plan on getting something if you think that your verbal promise is going to be what is going to solidify you securing that swap. No. Verbal promises do not work. They're not going to get you that item. Oh, so-and-so, I see this lipstick there. And, um, yeah, just hold that for me. You know I'm good for it. No. Especially if you're new and we don't know you specifically, and it's nothing against anybody. If we don't know you, if we're not familiar with you, I can't tell you how many times I get in my inbox, who is such person, can I trust them? I treat everybody with the same amount of an open mind as I would treat anybody I met out on the street, okay? You don't always know who you're dealing with, but you can give them the benefit of the doubt. My point is, don't make verbal promises with another person you don't know unless that person is somebody you know already, you're friends with, you trust. You just shouldn't do it. Okay. Number five, this is another very important thing. Do not stalk, do not harass, do not berate anyone who you haven't received a swap from on the timeline. There is no reason or necessity to do that. And please, if you are going to contact me, which is numero uno what you need to do if there is a problem with something you have not received, you have not gotten, or there was a problem with any type of swap, I am the administrator, I am the creator, the owner, and sole person on that page that handles all business. You need to contact me first. Do not berate anyone, do not harass anyone, do not make videos about that person, do not Twitter about that person. If you expect to get something in return from them, because at this point now, all you are creating is unnecessary drama and chaos. And at that point, you will be banned from the page, not able to use it at all. And it has happened already. And that person should know who they are. This is a huge, huge reason why I say do not make verbal promises. Do not say you want something. And do not promise something you cannot deliver because these will all result in this particular problem of somebody not getting their swap. Know what you are doing before you make it go. Here's another one. Do also be very courteous and fair. If someone claims something before you did, and it's happened to me a million times, somebody claims something you wanted and, you know, you get there and it's like, oh shoot, you know, oh I really wanted that. Let it go. At this point, seriously, we all have so many things or we all accumulate so many things. But mind you, I guarantee you that either somebody will make up for it or somebody can post another thing or they can make, you know, they can make an exception with something else they might have. Don't go on one item and give a person a hard time about it or even make somebody else uncomfortable because you didn't get said item. There's no reason for that. It's first come, first serve. If you're fast, you get it. That's bottom line the way it goes. I know a lot of people will say that me in particular, that I seem to get the swaps first. Here is why I get to the swaps first. First of all, I have to make sure the people that are posting, I have to make sure that this person that they, let's say somebody new posts. This person has never swapped with anyone before. I swap with them first because I want to make sure that it is something, first of all, I want to make sure that this person is comfortable enough to swap. And second of all, I want to make sure that this person sees through their swap. I have done it with every single person that has come to my page. Secondly, I own the page. I own the page. I also am the administrator of the page. If I happen to get to a swap that's before you, please do not make a big thing about it and do not say to other people, oh, she always gets this or she always gets that. Mind you as well, I also post first and I also post a lot of stuff. As in, 
Anytime that I feel the necessity that I think the page is going, you know, kind of slow, I'll throw a couple of items up there. And it's the same principle as it is for myself. First come, first serve. If I lose out on something, first come, first serve, I back away and you should too. Be fair and courteous to everyone that comes to the swap page. Okay, now, here's a do. You can do it, but you're not obligated to do it. And I can't believe how long this video is going to be. You are not required to, but you can post a video related to your swaps, which honestly is one of the nicest things you could do. I have so many wonderful ladies that have gotten to know them better because they have posted their swaps either with myself or other girls on their specific, specific YouTube channels, Facebook pages. And it just, it's so nice to see because you get an idea of that person, you get an idea of their likes, you get an idea of who they are, and I have made so many wonderful, wonderful friends this way, and I don't say it's a requirement, but you can do it if you feel, you know, comfortable with it. Definitely post it to the timeline, definitely post it, you know, on Facebook, because what you're doing, not only is you're, you're giving, um, of course, you're giving yourself more views on your channel, but you're promoting the swap shop that can also bring more people in and have more people to swap. And it's just, it's just a nice way to just give back. Okay. Number six, do not leave spam on the timeline. By spam, I mean, do not post about giveaways or, um, a diet you're on or anything like that. If it's not related to that page, I also post on the Sample Swap Shop freebies, I post deals, I post other people's videos. There is no room or necessity for any type of spam. Do not ask me or private message me about, oh, can I post about such and such pa uh, page if they have nothing to do with us. I am all about promoting and supporting everybody that comes to the Sample Swap Shop. We all have different pages, we all do different blogs, and I am 100% behind everybody that does that, and I will allow that. But do not spam my page, or else it's going to get deleted, and you'll probably get a warning within the inbox if you do that a lot. So please stay away from spamming on the timeline. Okay. Contests and giveaways. Okay. This is a big one too. There are several, several times that I do have a giveaway that will not only post to my sample swap shop page, but will post to cauliflower and also on my YouTube page. Anybody is, is accepted into my giveaways. So unless I specifically say the people on sw swap shop, blah, 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 everybody is open to my giveaways. Contests. Now we have an open and running right now, right now, for a mystery box. This I started back in the summer. Um, a, a couple of people actually asked me about what it would be like to like just make up different themes and mystery boxes and, and have people, you know, do that kind of a thing. And I thought it was a wonderful idea, so I decided to make that as a contest. So it is up on my blog, my cauliflower blog. I can link it to you. Basically what the concept of the mystery box is, is every time we do a drawing, we pick a different theme and depending on who enters, the entrance into the contest is you must fill out a form which is connected to my cauliflower at blogspot.com page and you must pay $2. And here's the reason why you must pay $2 for every drawing that's ever pulled because we are responsible for shipping your mystery box. It's just like a raffle. It's just like if you, you know, put a 50, 50 and you put a dollar in it's by chance. If you want to take that chance, by all means, we'd love to have you. And every drawing, yes, you do have to do it because it's for different boxes, different themes and so on. And I also ask for either one or two co-hosts during that time to assist me in, in, um, in creating the box to make it much just much more fun, much more exciting to not know what you're going to be getting, but it's related to a certain theme. Now, right now we have, um, it's smelling roses or it's all smelling roses, which is all going to be, um, related to, of course, things that smell good. That can be anything. So 
If you are interested in entering the drawing, go to my cauliflower blog page. I will link you below, or you can go on the sample swap shop as well. That link will always be on the page. Fill out the form, send the $2 in. It will go right to my uh, PayPal account and then you will be entered in the drawing and I will be pulling um, a drawing I will be pulling a name on September 15th um, I haven't posted what time I will be doing that yet and that person will be receiving a nice huge box of mystery items that the postage is paid for without having to swap back so I know it sounds like it's a little bit of a a catch-22 well why would I be paying if but again I'm creating this contest it's all you know it's all a mystery it's supposed to be kind of a fun thing and in order to do this we do I do need help with the shipping that's the only reason so that is it for my entire <laughs> my entire do's and don'ts and rules on how to use the sample swap shop I do apologize for this video being really long I'm kind of thinking am I might edit it or put it in different parts things like that so um, all links will be below the sample swap shop my um, my cauliflower blog spot page and also um, I'm probably going to be writing a blog about this so if when that's available I will also link that to you guys and that is it. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you and bye.